Hello Steelers and welcome to another Bench Report Hobby Update, uh, another one. Uh, I missed last week simply because it was both my birthday and uh, our wedding anniversary so we went away for the weekend, went over to Whitby uh, and it was lovely, I'll talk about that later on uh, or at least the presents that I got anyway of interest to those on the channel. Uh, so I got, um, yeah so we were away for the weekend so I just didn't get any uh, any hobbying done whatsoever over the weekend. However, over the last couple of weeks, I have actually managed to get quite a few bits and pieces painted here and there. Uh, and also started on some stuff and I've got quite a few things in the post. And as I say, I've got some presents as well. So I'll show you everything I've got over the last couple of weeks. And it has been a lot. So strap yourselves in because uh, there's a lot to talk about, I think. Well, first of all, painted. You remember I got from... Uh, Navy and Models and Books uh, Limited a while back I got the Prince of Wales and also the HMS Repulse the two, Jap uh, two British ships uh, that were sent out to Singapore in 1941-42 uh, as part of Force Z and they were sunk by the Japanese Air Force uh, during the famous battles against them so I thought I'll get these for Bag the Hun uh, so I've got those painted, uh, really nice models actually and it's the first time I've ever actually painted any ships as well uh, and I'm quite pleased with how they turned out. I haven't put them on bases because I'm, they're going to go on a hex map uh, when I do get a C map at some point, probably in the next couple of months I would have thought, that's the next thing I'm going to be on the list I think. Uh, and also as long as that I got the Japanese Maru class ships as well. Now these ones are a specific uh, Maru, I can't remember the name of it, it's Japanese, but they, they all look pretty similar these kind of cargo ships. So I thought I'll get these as well so these can be uh, some nice targets for uh, troop landing ships uh, for the uh, Wilderbeest, if nothing else, uh, see how many of them can sink anything. So I painted those as well, uh, quite pleased with those, very happy. The other thing I painted as well was from Brigade Models, I got their destroyed Mark IV 15mm. This is a lovely 3D printed little kit and it looks exactly like it would have done on the battlefield. It's a really, really nice kit, full of uh, flavour at the time. So I just painted that up, dead easy, a nice little scenery piece that will just sit on the table, use it as cover in things like Through the Mud and Blood, for example, or for cocking up the mud and blood. Really nice little model and they will do all of their 28mm 3D printed First World War vehicles in 15mm if you ask them as well. They've got some 15mm on their um, website but they will also do them as well. So I'm, I'm thinking about look, looking at some of the 4T ambulances next maybe and I'll have a look at those. And then also finally uh, I went back to Tabletop Studios uh, and I painted one of uh, Adam's houses that he'd sent a while back. If you remember he said I did a review of these and this has been sitting on the to paint pile for ages. Uh, I blocked most of the colours in and I just basically sat there looking at it for some reason. So I painted this up uh, really nice, added a little garden, uh, a little bits and pieces. I like the Stella Artois sign on it, although don't tell anybody I got the colours the wrong way around, but I don't think anybody has noticed yet. <laughs> uh, but I even painted the interior in a very, very rough manner. I didn't bother doing too much with it. It was just a quick, uh, quick paint and weather and that was done. I'm now actually starting on two more of his houses as well. I've got this one here, uh, three-storey boulangerie. As you can see, I've just blocked in the colours. Uh, I was doing that during the live stream last week. And then also I've got this, which is a cordonier. Uh, again, another small, uh, just typical Normandy houses. These are not meant to be historical in any way, or you know, based on historical buildings. They are just uh, Normandy houses. So uh, they're going to be lovely when they're painted up, and they won't take long once I've got the the basic colours blocked in as I have at this point. Also, sticking kind of with mud and the blood, which I just mentioned with the tank. I actually went through and I made a load of cards for it based on Sydney Roundwood's old deck of cards. Uh, I'd actually originally printed these out and then pasted, spent about three days pasting the things together. But now I've actually been able to, I can't remember if I mentioned this previously, but I've actually put them up on uh, printersstudio.co.uk, which is uh, the UK version of ArtScale pretty much, where you can create your own cards. So I've done them and I've done I've done the British, the French, the Germans, uh, I've done also the British and the German uh, armour crew and also the British cavalry ones, all the ones that Sydney did and these are them here, you can see I've got a huge pile of them because I've got them all printed as well. Uh, and there's tons and tons of these. Uh, I'm not going to go through every single one because I've just got so many of them. But look, for example, we've got German Flammenwaffe, Flammenwaffe 3, German Field Artillery. Uh, and I've used all the names that Sydney gave to his characters because they are also the same as the base 
labels that I've used for my characters in Through the Mud and Blood 15 mil stuff. So I've got those printed. I will put a link to the cards in the description below so you can go and buy them yourself. However, I've got to say, they, I have created five decks, but for uh, various reasons they've only allowed three of them to be published. Uh, they say that there is an issue with copywriting on the back cover, I'm assuming because of the picture of Kitchener, but they've allowed the first three sets to go through and not the second two, so I don't know. So the second two are the French uh, and the British and German extras, so it's the Panzer Troops. So I've actually been able to get the British and the, uh, and the German stuff up there, or the basic stuff, uh, so you'd need all three sets really just to play a full game because it's got all of them. Um, what I have done though is over in the Mud and the Blood Facebook group is I've actually uh, put a Google link to my Google Drive with all the images that I did, so I've re reshaped them because it took me forever, there's still like 270 cards, it took me forever to go through and do these ones, so I didn't really want to do it again on ArtsCal, but if somebody wants to, please go and join the Facebook group and then just upload them and work your way through them uh, and then if you do please just share them over there as well i know that joe hudgens had started some but i think they were slightly uh just slightly off uh because he's used sid's original images uh, and they didn't shrink properly to a normal playing card size i just used their online software editor bars of sale provided all the the basic colors and things for the the cards themselves you'll find them all there uh, they were all free anyway, they were all free on the internet, so I, uh, I can't exactly charge for those, can I? Also as well, in the Facebook group, you will uh, find, because I'll talk about this in a second, uh, an, a, a document which I put up, which is all the base labels that I use for the big men, uh, all named. This is the French group, which I'll show you in a minute, so I'll talk about those in a second. Uh, but I've also done the British and the Germans, again, the ones that Sid had... Uh, put on his cards so all those will match with this these sets of cards uh, so we've got that you've got that as well uh, and oh they are they are sized for 19 uh, millimeters which is the size of a penny if you want them bigger just make uh, print them out slightly bigger they're quite hard to see but you can actually read them uh, and it's just enough in a game to, to know who is who when they're running about on the table so it just makes things a hell of a lot easier I have found so that's why I did that and that's why I've uh, done those but yeah there's, I'm currently waiting for uh, a couple of boxes to come through because the boxes from the printer studio are very expensive so I didn't buy them I just got them uh, separate as um, uh, card card boxes for you know games and things and I'm also waiting for some uh, card uh, packs as well, uh, protectors, so they'll be coming through soon and hopefully I'll have them all protected and packed away at some point. I forgot to mention it a few weeks ago, speaking of cards, I also got the Malaya cards for uh, Bag the Hun, these are the ones that Jim had uh, done, Jim who actually prints, uh, produced the aircraft in the first place, the STLs, he's also gone back and he's uh, on these are on now on Arts Cow, uh, I'll try and remember to put these a link in there as well, but we've also got so we've got full uh, two decks of uh, Malaya cards, so that's 110 cards in total. So because I was using my uh, Battle of Britain cards, which he'd also produced, and I decided I wanted specific ones, so I, I hinted very loudly at Jim, and he in the uh, answered the call, and he basically made uh, full sets of them. So that's great. So I've got those. Uh, I forgot to mention those. They came through a couple of weeks ago, but that's them there, and them there. Oh, I'm knocking them everywhere. Um, so. That just uh, makes it a bit more thematic for playing Bag the Hun for uh, Malaya stuff. So you'll, you will see those at some point in the future, I think, when I next do a Malaya Bag the Hun game on the channel, which I don't know when it will be, but I'm sure it will be at some point. So I've already mentioned it about three times at this point, but through the mud and the blood, the reason I did the French labels just recently is because I got a bunch of 15mm uh, French from Peter Pig. You can see they're here actually on the painting table. I've sorted out a platoon's worth. I've still got quite a few left in the bag, so I'm going to put those on bases and make them possibly into a second platoon, uh, probably of either a, a smaller platoon, a, a reduced size platoon, or even, I think I might just use them for... Uh, 
uh, a, a colonial platoon as well. Uh, so that'll be interesting. Just uh, a diff slightly different uniforms there. The colonials wore uh, khaki, whereas the actual French army wore that horizon blue, which I'm going to really enjoy painting, I think. I'm looking forward to that. But they are on the table. Uh, p pretty big um, platoon of 45 men, including ba um, uh, big men as well. So uh, sizable and lots of firepower in there as well. So looking forward to getting to those, they came through the post. Also the other thing as well, I'm going to come back to this later on, but I also uh, just recently got the Citadel the Breakthrough, uh, Crush Deutschland's Attack of Kursk, the uh, pint-sized campaign for Chain of Command. This is part two, because uh, uh, Dex and I have just started this one, uh, and I'll come back to that in a second when I talk about what we've played. Uh, and uh, again, I, I, for some reason I realised I, I, I've got I've had it this for ages but I just didn't have it in hard copy and it's always useful having the hard copy down at the club so I got that printed over a Docs Direct of course as you know alright and then also uh, I've got a ton of bases because I thought I'd run out of 15mm uh, diameter bases for individual figures for um, things so I just got a load of these from War Bases as well these turned up today about 100 50 or so of these, so they'll keep me going for a long time, more bases you can eat, I guess. So that's the kind of stuff that came in the post, that's the uh, the, the, the most of it anyway, so over the last couple of weeks, bits and pieces have been filtering in. As I said, it was my birthday last weekend, so we were away for that uh, on the Friday, uh, and I also got quite a lot of presents for that as well, which was very nice. The first one up is this, it's called the On the Dangerous Edge by Kenneth Radley. It's the British and Canadian trench raiding on the Western Front 1914 to 1918. So I'd heard about this on a, uh, a podcast from the Western Front Association uh, talking about raids and things. And I think this is a Helion and Company book, of course. Uh, and I thought this will be absolutely packed full of uh, information about scenarios and things for Through the Mud and Blood, if nothing else. Uh, so I thought I'll buy that. Well, I, I put it on my wish list and got I got it for uh, my birthday. So very chuffed with that indeed. That'll be very interesting. As I say, just to make some interesting scenarios for uh, Through the Mud and Blood, if nothing else. The other thing I got was it was a Garth Ennis uh, birthday this year so first thing that I got uh, from my wife was uh, this Dreaming Eagles uh, which is based on the Tuskegee Airmen uh, as you'll, I'm sure you're aware the first all black American uh, pilots of the Second World War uh, who went on to score lots and lots of victories uh, and this is a great story it is fictional but it's based on you know various accounts and things like that but well worth having a look at really good interesting story that also brings it up to the 1960s as well and the uh, civil rights movements uh, so it's worth worth you know it's nice to see the juxtaposition between the second world war and the 1960s and how things were changing in america uh, well written really good fun as well and i like garth ennis's stuff i always have done ever since i was a kid the other thing I got as well. I've already I already got copy, uh, uh, volume one of this, but this is out of the blue. This is about the mosquito pilots. Uh, this was a nice quick read. This is this is only two two volumes, so I got second volume here. Uh, so I got both of those, and I'll probably go back and read these ones. A nice quick read. This and lovely again, great artwork from uh, Jason Wordy. I think he's called. Uh, really nice comic art on these ones, and again just based on. Second World War pilots and uh, what they got up to in their mosquitoes and again giving me ideas for uh, Bag the Hun. I'm already looking at doing some Tuskegee uh, Red Tails uh, P-51s perhaps and some B-17s. You never know that might happen at some point. This one is Battlefields. I'm currently about halfway through this. Uh, so I've sent loads of Garth Ennis at the moment. Uh, so this is uh, this is various artists. Uh, Carlos Esquezia is the is my favourite one out of these guys. But we've got a story. Uh, I've not read it all this yet. But the first one is about the Night Witches, the uh, all female bombing group of the Soviet Union. The second one, I believe, is a story about the Far East. And then the last one is called the Tankies, and that's going to be uh, it is about British tank crew in uh, late Second World War, 44-45, I think it's in Normandy, and that is that is the Carlos Equesio. So I'm looking forward to reading that one. It looks great, just flicking through it. Uh, and again, another interesting stuff, you know, interesting aspects and per, uh, per, uh, different, different views of the Second World War uh, that you would normally get. And the last one 
is this one which I'm also very much looking forward to, the string bags, which is all about the torpedo bombers, the uh, fairy swordfish torpedo, torpedo bomber crews, obviously completely outdated by the Second World War, but you know uh, they still had to they still had to use what they what they got, and they did uh, attack several German battleships. I think they attacked the Tirpitz, if I'm correct. Uh, and and this one again, I've not touched this one yet, but I'm looking forward to it. it looks like fantastic artwork. Uh, these are, if anything, these are a little bit like the Commando comics, uh, but for grown ups almost, because uh, there is swearing in them. Uh, so mind mind how you go, but uh, they are you know incredibly beautifully illustrated, really nicely produced as well. Uh, I you know I love comic art and I love comics anyway. I just think they're a really good. Uh, medium for telling stories and Garth Ennis in particular is a very good storyteller he, he's obviously got a massive love of aircraft really knows his stuff as well and you know that comes across massively in all of those so check those out they're well worth it uh, if I remember I will put some links in uh, in the description down below other than that there has also been uh, quite a few other bits and pieces of hobbying going on as well uh, last weekend, I think it should be out this weekend, uh, maybe by the time this has come out or even later on by the time this video is out, but I recorded a, uh, a, a an interview with Tom and Andy over at the Hobby Support Group on their great podcast, it was their number 100, uh, so congratulations on reaching that milestone chaps, uh, and basically it was a question and answer session, but it was me questioning them with their answers, uh, so we just wanted to talk through that, had a bit of a chat about uh, other various things as well, so uh, really appreciate being asked onto that one chaps, and uh, hopefully uh, everyone go and check it out again once again descriptions down below as always a uh, couple of hours just flew by and speaking of which uh, I'm also to be set to record the Brews in the Binyard summer special with Ken and with uh, Sean of God's Own Scale over on the Yorkshire Gamers podcast uh, and that's hopefully I think next week at some point uh, if not unless anything changes but that's the plan uh, so that again Keep an eye out for that or an ear out for that on uh, Yorkshire Gamers podcast. I know they always get quite a, uh, a good reception from the audience, according to Ken. He always uh, feeds back to us the feedback that people give us and a lot of people enjoy it. Uh, so that's the main thing and that's what it's all about. Uh, and yes, uh, since the last time I, I did a, an update, I've actually played a couple of games as well. I was down at the club with Dean and we played uh, Lion Rampant. This was... Uh, Seljuk Turks versus Crusaders, uh, and it's the first time I used to have a copy of Lion Rampant, but uh, I read it uh, and I think I sold it a long time ago because I just thought I'll never play this. Uh, I enjoyed what I read, of course, and then we played it for the first time, so some of it came back to me, and also it's very similar to Xenos Rampant as well, which I played recently. Uh, and yeah, it was a great fun game, you know, uh, you can use it as a sandbox if you like and a lot of people have done they've gone wild with it but uh, it, it did what it said on the tin and it was great fun uh, decisive victory on my part uh, I basically I was the crusaders uh, and I uh, basically hammered him from the flanks not that gaming should be about who wins and who loses it's all about the enjoyment of it and it certainly was good fun and then this week uh, just gone uh, I've already mentioned it, but Kursk and uh, Dex and I started the Kursk Part 2 campaign uh, for Chain of Command. Uh, so this is the Citadel Breakthrough. So this was the first one. A very cagey game to start with. Both of us were kind of trying to size each other up. I was attacking as the Germans. He's defending as the Soviets. We carried over the uh, the platoons that we had, or at least I did. He didn't, but he kept his com uh, commissar. Uh, so we kept the CEO's opinions and also the men's opinions of the men that we had in our previous campaign so it's nice to follow those through and uh, yeah very cagey opening but it's very difficult attacking on some of those tables because they are very open so there's not a great deal you can do I tried pushing forward ever so slightly but he suddenly popped up and destroyed my section as I did despite them being tactical all I could do was really fire back uh, with overwatching things but Finally, the twin MGs in the Panzergrenadier platoons were able to uh, destroy his 
uh, force morale. He'd already got it pretty low at the start anyway. I think I was on 11 against his 7, uh, so I was able to force it down pretty pretty quickly. So uh, I was pretty chuffed with that, and that was the main thing. <laughs> um, we'll see what happens with the next one. Uh, and But yes, it's, uh, again, already proving to be an interesting campaign after the first uh, the first encounter. And then on Friday night, it was a friend's 40th, so uh, we gathered at her house and we had a game of Mansions of Madness. It went on for, ooh, let me think, it was about, ooh, we started about 8 o'clock and we finished at one thirty. So, <laughs> working out five and a half hours of Mansions of Madness. It was a good one. It was from their um, Horrific Journeys, I think, is the uh, the expansion. And this one was a, uh, a, basically we were trying to escape a sinking ship whilst getting all the passengers. Meanwhile, a couple of the people who were with us were actually Deep One hybrids and were also trying to stop us getting these people out. So it was very good. Led to a lot of paranoia and lots of accusations of who was uh, on which side, who was human, who was which, who was hybrid. Good fun. That was the main thing. All right, that's it. I think that's that kind of brings me to the end of this uh, particular episode of the hobby update the bench report uh, there's not much else to say as i say i am over on threads uh, over on, uh, uh, on on your mobiles uh, i'm also going to check out the facebook page for storm of steel and also the facebook group as well get some pictures posted in the uh, tiny little uh, attack yet if not and as always check out the patreon uh, it's always appreciated a little bit of help is always good to keep the lights on here at storm towers uh, and obviously if you haven't anyway do subscribe if you're watching this without subscribing 85 percent of the people who do watch these videos are uns are not subscribers so please do subscribe because you'll get all the latest videos in your feed and all that jazz also hit that like button as well and i'll see you in the next hobby updates and a bench report Thank you.